Hello, I'd like to talk to you today about how to give feedback to other people on their academic writing. In another video on this channel, I talked about how to deal with feedback on your writing, but it's also important to know how to give feedback, perhaps to your peers, perhaps you're doing your first peer review. Whatever the context, I'm offering you my 12 top tips for giving excellent feedback. The first tip is to be honest in what you say. There's no point giving feedback that isn't true. You might want to be diplomatic at times, be a bit tactful, but there's really, it's absolutely essential to be honest. Tip number two is to read the work you're giving feedback on carefully at least twice so that you are as clear as you can be that you understand what the author is trying to say. Tip three is to make notes as you read because you won't remember every thought that comes into your head. I like to work on screen, so I read in a Word document and I use the comment function to make notes in the margin as I go. Other people I know prefer to read on paper and make notes using a pen. That's fine, it doesn't matter how you do it, but make notes of your thoughts and reactions as you go. You may not include them all in the feedback, but they will be useful to you in formulating that feedback. Tip number four is to include praise. There will always be something you can praise, sometimes quite a lot. It helps writers to know what they can relax about, and it helps writers to digest and accept more critical feedback if they've also had some compliments on their work. Because whatever you think of their work, even if you think it's fundamentally a bit rubbish, they've put a lot of time and effort into it, and it's worth recognising that. I've never yet come across a piece of writing where I can't find anything to praise. There's always something. Tip number five, if there's something in their work that you don't understand, then say so. That's useful feedback for them. Sometimes people are afraid to do this because they feel it makes them look stupid, but it doesn't. Just say you don't understand. You don't need to say, I don't understand this because it doesn't make sense, or I don't understand this because you're a terrible writer. Just point out that you don't understand and, they'll under and they should then infer from that that they need to write it more clearly. Tip number six, where you can see improvement is needed, give a straightforward assessment. Stick to the facts. You can say things like the structure seems a bit unclear or this paragraph contains three ideas. It would be better to have one idea per paragraph, something like that. And tip number seven, which I've just anticipated, is to explain how the author can make the improvements that are needed. Don't just say what's needed. Obviously do say that, but don't leave it at that. Also say how. So if the structure is unclear, you might suggest that they pull out the subheadings and put them in order to see if they can assess the structural flow that way. Tip number eight, if you think they've missed some literature that's relevant, then suggest some references. Maybe don't do what one anonymous reviewer once did with me, which was suggested eight references, all by the same person, which kind of made me suspect who that reviewer was. Don't use it as an excuse to promote your own work unless it's really, truly relevant, and then mix it with others. But where it's relevant, suggest if you know something that you think they should have read that they haven't, give them the proper link, the URL, the DOI, something that help them find that piece of work. And tip number nine, if you think they've missed something but you actually don't have the references at the top of your mind and you can't perhaps think what it is they could have used, have a quick look on Google Scholar or on the directory of open access journals. Just see if you can find a few clues. I did one recently. I won't say what because um, it might give away who wrote it. Uh, but I did a review recently where I thought the author had missed a point, but it wasn't a field I'm familiar with. It was a methods article, but the actual field was unfamiliar to me. So I had a quick look on Google Scholar using a specific search term. And sure enough, there were about seven and a half thousand hits. So I was able to say to the author, while I'm not aware of the literature, I know it exists. I've had a look. It's there. I think you need to say a bit more about this here. And probably the author will be aware of it anyway. They may have just forgotten. Tip number 10, if your own knowledge limits you 
to some extent, like in the example I've just given. You can say so. Again, it's not going to make you look stupid. It'll just make you look as if you are authoritative, actually, because it'll probably give the author more confidence that where you are giving specific advice, you know what you're talking about. You can still suggest that they look into a specific area. You can say, you know, this part isn't my field, but I think there might be more you could do here to tie this up with that or whatever, and suggest they look into it. Tip 11, acknowledge that the author has emotions about their writing because we all do. So for example, if you've given a small amount of praise and a lot of constructive criticism, you might like to acknowledge that your feedback may feel discouraging. And then you might like to go on and say, but I think there's a lot of promise here in this article, in this book chapter, and I hope you'll feel able to make these revisions, make your work stronger, give them some encouragement, give them some support. Feedback can be difficult to receive, even for very experienced authors, but we all need it. It's really helpful and it's really important for us all. So tip number 12, this is my last tip, which is always, always be polite. Even if your feedback is anonymous, that's no excuse for being rude. I've been on the receiving end of some very rude feedback. Perhaps you have too. Let's not pay that forward. Let's always be polite as we give feedback because... It shows respect for the work that the author has put in to their work and it will make them feel more inclined to go forward and revise it for everybody's benefit.